You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello, and welcome to episode 140 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I have got a special treat for all of you out there in podcast land, all of you Soul Forgers. I uh, mentioned at the beginning of the year that I was going to pepper in some exciting episodes talking to successfully married couples or successful long term couples, whether they're married or not. And I've got this one here. It's the first one of the year. It's my co hosts on the Rusted Robot podcast. We've got Josh and Kitty. Say hi, folks. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. There you go. See? And that's part of why you're a successful couple, because you're both very quirky and funny. (laughs) So we just got off recording episode 279 of Rusted Robot Podcast, and we thought, what better way to follow that up than with this week's Soul Forge Podcast? Sure, because you you can't sit down and record too much. You can never record too much in one day, can you? Is this technically a crossover? Uh, Could be. Because I've been trying to get you guys on Soul Forge for the last two and a half years, and now finally I have you both at once. It's my success story. <laughs> we, can end, we, we, can, we can end the podcast right here, <laughs> or we could continue to talk about what makes you guys a successful couple. I, I have not prepared for this at all. It's always just a go with the flow kind of conversation. So I'm going to ask, how long have you guys known each other for? Where did you meet, and all that good stuff? Uh, we have known each other. For 20 years. 21 years. 21 years. Yeah. That's a long time. I was 14 when we met. So now you're 35. Yeah. That's good math, right? Mm-hmm. You were 14 when we were introduced. Yeah. Uh, when we do... met. He asked how long we've known each other. We have met previously, though. Yes, that's technically true. We saw each other before. Yeah. Because we, we went to the same school Okay. Uh, for a period of time, but she's three and a half years younger than me. Right. So we were on the same floor of the school at the same time and probably saw each other at recess, but... Not too much interaction at that time. No. No, no interaction other than the, look, there's a person. Okay. Don't, don't run into them while, while playing. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't love at first sight? No, technically not. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you were 14, you were 17, we'll say. When, yeah, you, when you guys were introduced formally. Yeah. How did that happen? I had a, like a weird starting friendship thing with her sister. Okay. Who was dating a douchebag named Dave. Oh, you got to watch out for douchebag Daves. He was two years older than me. Okay. Which put him at 19 and Melanie was 15. Oh, that's a bit of a difference. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. So, anyways, they introduced me to Katie... I think with the assumption that we would start dating. Okay. But we just became friends. Nice. Okay. And then we also started playing Rifts together. Yeah, I, I introduced her to the tabletop RPG world. Is that the one in the lunchroom that Corey Robin... Oh, that was later, uh, eventually. That was but that? I was still in grade school. Ah. Yeah, in, at 14, when did you been in like, grade 9? I was just finishing grade school. We met the summer after I finished grade school and was about to go into high school. Oh, okay. It was that summer that we met. The summer before grade nine. Uh huh. Okay. It was we met before the end of the school year, because I remember going with you to the restaurant for your graduation or grade eight. Yes, that's true. But I also skipped a lot of school, so. <sighs> yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it, it was sometime late spring. It was like June. Yeah. What was the year? Can we track that down? That would be math. So. Twenty uh, years from. Nineteen ninety nine. Twenty one years from. So nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. All right, now we've got a time and place, Timmins, 1999. And then, the last millennium, think of it. Oh, that's weird. And then I dated her sister. Melanie. F- 
for about eight months. Okay. And things ended badly because I am a person who likes commitment and not being cheated on. That's important in a relationship. And, you and could she, just say it ended badly. <laughs> and she felt otherwise. So so you wanted to keep it in the family, so you dated the younger sister. Uh, no, because oh. Katie was my friend, and I am not weird like that. Like, well, I'll just date the next one in line. You're close. We are friends already. No, actually, we just stayed friends for, I think it was like a year. Yeah, we were were just friends, and we talked, and we were friends, and... Things naturally developed. Yeah. Well, we did hang out a lot together, because I did join his Dungeon and Dragon and Magic group. Okay. Because, well, I like all of those things. And it's not like there was, like, an art club at school. No. So... You had the, the Geek Gamer Club. Yeah, and it was really fun. It was a good time. And then we just kind of started into, like, pre-dating phase, where we were friends. We would just hang out a lot, just us, but it wasn't a date, really. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Been there, done that. And then we were walking to... Um, but also, I got asked out a lot and by other people and would turn them down, because I had a crush on Josh. And no, then it it's... turned out that Josh also had a crush on me, but we just stayed in crushy phase for a really long time. Okay. And then one day we were walking to uh, um, Country Style, just outside of Schumacher. Yeah. Yeah. And it was uh, August 18th, 11 p.m. And I was like, do you want a date, officially? (laughs) You remember the time and the date, that's awesome. Yes. And I opened up the negotiation with 13 children. (laughs) So this would have been August 18th of 2000. Of 2000, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. That I started the negotiation with thirteen children. I let her talk me down, because that's how you, that's how you start a negotiation. Over ask so you can get talked down to where you're acceptable. Yeah, oh, is that how you remember it? Yep. He he's not making it up. This was actually how our conversation went, and I mostly was just laughing about how silly it was because we were teenagers, and it's a weird. It's a weird idea to start dating conversations with how many children do you want, but I guess. It at least showed that he was in it for the long haul, right? Did you guys think it would be, like, a permanent thing? I don't date with the, oh, well, I'm just going to break up with her in six months and see if I can find somebody better. No. Well, no. If I'm going into a relationship, Mm -hmm. I want it to be a long-term thing. Okay. Right? And Mm -hmm. I wasn't turning people down just for the hell of it. Right. Because, like, I was like, no, I really, really like it. You guys had a feeling inside that this is something. Like, even when I was in grade 10, so we had been dating for a while... In shop class, we were supposed to make a sign just so that we could uh, work on our routering skills. So learning to router, we had to make like lots of different things, but the only thing we really had to do was like uh, inlay or making these letter signs. So I made a Montney House sign. Oh. And I figured if anything horrible happened in the future, I would just give it to him as some kind of weird freakish parting gift because what use would I have right, for a Montney House sign? Because that wouldn't be your last name. Exactly, but I was just like, no, this will be hanging in my house someday. And do you, it, still, do you still have it? it I do still have no, it. Clear front window. Yeah. Oh, nice. Because we were going to put it up somewhere, but I just want to make sure that it's properly weather sealed first. Right, of course. So We've we, been living in this house for, what, 11 years? No, 12, 12 years now? And it's still not up. It's still not sealed. Oh, <laughs> lazy. lazy. We, will, we will get to it. Uh, we also still have a hole in our ceiling in the bathroom that we... Bought the house, whip it in there, and just haven't fixed it yet. Everything's eventual. We did We did repair the roof that was causing the leak in the first place. Good so thinking. That's good. That's that good. was done the year that we moved in. So yep. We've so, been repairing. It's just we have priorities. Well, sure. Yeah. And a small hold is, is, is low priorities. Yeah. Well, of course. The first, the first fix was the, other than the roof, was getting out that horrible carpet because Ugh. I have allergies. So mm. I bought myself a carpet, or a floor for my birthday. Oh, nice. Okay, so... August 18th, 2000, you guys start dating. Yeah. You're in grade 10? Yes, I think so. You must be out of high school by this point? No, I was in uh, last OEC. Grade. Yeah. Oh, because there was still OEC back then. Yeah, That's right. I was I was amongst the last year that had grade, grade 13. 13. Right, okay, yes. So you date and you date and you date? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did you guys get married? Uh, well, so... Or what other stories do you have? So August 18th, I asked Katie out. With 13 kids. Yes, <laughs> that whole negotiation goes through. We do we ha- that negotiation concluded with we are officially dating. Okay. Uh, two weeks later, Uh-oh. 
uh, I'm ending my contract working at the uh, Ontario Parks. Mm -hmm. Oh, those were good days. Yeah. And uh, I had already told my parents that I am moving out because I had already asked Katie if I could rent the apartment above her mom's house. Ah. Yeah. So before we were dating, I was already going to live in the apartment above her house. It's a really cute little apartment. So I got the apartment. I paid a year's rent in advance. Wow. Okay. Well, I, just, I literally just finished working at the parks, mm -hmm. and I had a roommate at the time, so my rent was $150 a month. Oh, okay. Right? 300 divided by two. Yeah. And I was like, here, I'm paid up for a year. Because that's the way you do it. You, you pay your rent in a, in a year in advance, and landlord doesn't bug you. They think you're great. Yeah, and you hope for the best that you'll get a job and yeah. such. So I had the apartment above, but eight months into having that apartment, my roommate ends up getting kicked out oh. because of craziness and cops coming to the house at like 3 o'clock in the morning to mm. get a 12-year-old or 13-year-old out of the, the apartment. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, I wake up, they're in there, the cops are out the door. I'm like, walk in, I'll let them in, they're on the couch, and go back to my room. Yeah, those were weird times. Yeah. Uh -huh. Glad right. he's gone. So, he's gone. Uh, but now I have an apartment all to myself, and my girlfriend lives downstairs. Right, okay. She was upstairs all the time. Yeah. Because, why not? Well, of course. They started airing Stargate on TV. My family only had, like, a TV. And nobody wanted to watch Stargate but me. Mm. And I had two TVs. <laughs> so you went upstairs to watch Stargate? I watched Josh. Stargate. It was great. We kind of unofficially moved in together. She spent all of her time upstairs. Right, of course. And then she officially moved in, I think, the next year? I think so. Something like that. Okay. Um, we've been together ever since living together. Yeah. So, two... We had roommates and stuff, too. Yeah, that two, was craziness. Two years into the relationship, we moved in together. Well, that's, that's a good, solid time. Yeah. Yeah, I so, don't think it's a weird amount of time, right? But, then again, she was upstairs all the time. So, and she was effectively living together. Of course. And it was... After the roommate moved out after eight months. And it was the same house anyway. So, really, what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah, and my bedroom used to be her bedroom. It does make mm. it, yeah. It also made it much easier to make sure that you were awake to go to school. Yeah. Josh has a tendency to sleep in. I've been his alarm clock since he lived above my house. Right, of course. Because he's bad at waking up on I his am. own. I am. I'm terrible waking up on my own. I am not a morning person. I, I know this. I've, no yeah. I've noticed when I come over for podcasting, sometimes you're not awake. More than once, I had to borrow my neighbor's ladder and climb on top of the roof and open the window and shake him awake like a crazy person. And he was like, why are you here? How did you get in? Right, right. Because it would be terrifying to have a person standing in your room. Of course. You know. Not I, in the room. She's leaning in through the window yeah, shaking yeah. me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. or sometimes I had just, I, I would be standing over the bed like an ice cold demon with my death hands shaking his shoulders. Wake up! You, you know what else you could have used to wake you up? other podcasts here on the ESO Network, much like this promo that I'm going to play for you right here. Armed with a queer woman's perspective, the Terminus Doctor Who podcast brings you passionate geekery for the world of Doctor Who, covering both the new and classic series. Come check out the Terminus Doctor Who podcast at Terminus.Lipson.com or come look for us on iTunes or your other favorite podcatchers as part of the ESO Network. Determinist Doctor Who podcast. Queer, opinionated, Whovian, female. And if that wouldn't have done it, what else would you have done besides shaking him up with your cold hands? Uh, well, we, we tried an intercom system because when I used to live in the apartment because uh, the house didn't have lots and lots of bedrooms and at some point we wanted all to have our own bedrooms, so myself and my older sister got the upstairs apartment as our bedrooms. Ah. It's just that we had to go outside to go up to our rooms instead of staying inside the house. But it's basically the same thing. Because it was always separate. It was always its own separate. Yeah, it's okay. always its own separate unit. But um, And that's the blue house back in Schumacher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we had this intercom system so that we could easily speak to each other because we used to yell through the vents. That works. Uh, <laughs> but not everybody could hear uh, uh, so then we also learned the trick from the phone technician to call your own phone where you would pick up your landline phone punch in 
999, then the number, then hang up, hang up, and hang up again, and then it would ring. Oh. Uh, and then you pick up your phone, and hopefully there's somebody on the other side. <laughs> uh, but then when intercoms became a thing, we had this weird plug inable intercom, and before I had moved upstairs, my mom would try and call him awake, or I'd try and call him awake, and he'd usually just stick it on lock or set the alarm button on it, so we'd just hear this awful screeching sound for hours, so that's when I decided I was going to start climbing in through the window and scaring the crap out of him. And it worked? Yeah. Okay. So how long did you guys live in that place for together? Only a year. No, more. You lived in there for more because you were in there for a while before I moved in. But we had Ashley for six months, and then we there was you and I for a whole year by ourselves. And then? And then eight months with... Uh, when I had the roommate. Yeah. Okay. So well, that, a year and a half. Yeah. But like the thing is, when Josh took that apartment, it's because the rent was good and it was above this cute girl that he liked. Of course. Who was also his friend. Mm-hmm. But it had very slanty ceilings. Oh, and he's tall guy. And he's very tall. Yes. And the door to the bathroom, I just squeak underneath Just above it. eye level. Oh, and, ouch. Yeah. And I am not a morning person. Right. So There's right. also a lip going into the bathroom. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There to was a... Up? No. Yeah. Uh, no, it was to go down. No, it was the same same height, but the the height of the ceiling in there was totally different. Yeah. That's what it was. It was wonky. Okay. It wasn't wonky. It sounds wonky. It was just built for very little people. Okay. Hobbits. Yeah. Okay. People used to be shorter. Sure. He was always cracking his noggin all of the time. All bad. And sometimes it was really hard. Is that where that scar from on where it came from? No, that's oh. from when he was a baby. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then uh, you guys are living together, blah, blah, blah. Then what happens? Uh, we moved in with roommates uh, on Spruce. Lived with roommates, which changed out one roommate for another. We then took our one good roommate and moved to Maple... No, Birch. Birch North. Yeah. Birch South. Yeah. And we lived there for a year and a half with that roommate. The main problem, though, was the landlord was supposed to fix a bunch of things, and he never, ever, ever fixed them, ever. Like, we had a quarter of our door missing. Oh. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Our, our dog would just walk in and out of the bedroom all the time, so okay. there was no real way to contain her. Oh. And like we we just had like a thing that we would place in front of the door for privacy. Yeah. Uh, okay. But there was a... Uh, there was also, like, this... You know the thing that is supposed to... When you have a floor separation, you put, a like, a thing like there? Like a transition strip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there was a metal one that, when we moved in, part of it was curled up. Oh, ouch. Um, so my sock caught on it when I was going downstairs to do laundry, yeah. and I took a fall down the stairs. Ooh. And then I threw up and was really dizzy for a long time. I don't know if I was con- concussed at all. I seemed mostly okay but it just wasn't good so we moved out shortly after that because we were like he's never going to fix anything that that and our roommate had decided since there's one of him and two of us we should be covering two thirds of the rent and bills even though we have one bedroom he has one bedroom and everything else is shared Right. and at this time we were not doing well financially Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the, the time we had to use the food bank oh yes and like we Walked to South End. Yeah, our dog would haul the food back for us. Nice. He's we'll a good dog. Put the, the food in the, the wagon and have the dog pull it all the way home. Wagon or sled. Yeah. And, like, we survived on... on Mostly rice. Yeah. So you had some trouble financially. Yep. And Did you guys snipe one, at each other? Nope. Not really. No, I... Oh, our... We had, like, three major fights and two minor fights in our entire relationship. In the whole 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like... And Communication like, is really important. The, our and our major fights were never about the thing that our major fights content was about. Okay, it was always about subjective matters of of like you're not listening to my opinion of what I think. Mm-hmm. because listening is really important. So I, that's always the thing. If you feel that the other one's not listening, that's going to be your. your and two of them were literally just about an understanding of what I thought was factual and what she thought was factual, them not matching up. So, like, knock down drag out fights or just heated arguments or... Heated arguments and getting upset and then realizing I'm getting upset, I'm going to stop arguing now. And go to a different room. Like, 
I think both of them were out walking for the two... I don't remember. I think so. Anyways, we took... We literally just stopped talking, separated for a bit, so that... Because, like, a rational argument about facts should never get emotional. True, because it's a fact. And if it's getting too emotional, you know you're... You're, you're being dumb. You've invested too much Even in if it. you're right, you're being dumb. Right. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. so, like, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. There's... We had the power of the internet, so, like, we're just like, well, once we get home, then we'll solve the argument. Because, like, for it to be heated about facts is dumb... And, we're both being dumb. But and, no, so nothing about your relationship. No, not really. No, well, see, 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 but that is that is about the relationship. You're not listening to me, right? When I think I am correct, you're and you're over talking me because once I get into a, a heated discussion about facts, and I know I'm right, even if I'm wrong, I think I'm right, and therefore I'm going to assume I'm right, and then I will defend my position loudly and vigorously. And I tend to be kind of the same way, but the problem. Well, it's not the problem. The the best thing about our facts, well, like, we don't have very many arguments because we watch a lot of the same information and we read a lot of the same information. So we're not going to fight over things that we know because we both watched it together. And, <laughs> and generally when we're bringing facts to things, it's either Katie telling me something she's learned or I telling her something that I've learned. So there's not generally a dispute about facts because it's a new inf- influx of facts. Yeah, and normally it's something, you know, you're not going to come home and tell somebody something that they know already. Right. So it's just like, would you like to learn a new thing that I learned today? And it's like, yes, I would. That sounds interesting. But the the two major arguments that involved this kind of dispute were literally, this is this, no, it is not. And the argument is about the subject matter, which is irrelevant. Right. But... It's really about you're not listening to me when I know I'm correct. Yeah. Okay. And both of us getting emotionally invested in a position of facts that can easily be verified if given a few moments. Just because we're we're sticklers for why aren't you just trusting me? <laughs> uh, all right. So and which makes sense, but also like logically, we both know the other one wouldn't do that. But we were just very invested in, in our that. argument like, at the, the time. The first one was about bears. Okay. Bears are not an emotional subject no, for us. No, I can't say But we were either. stuck into it. Okay. Yeah. Also, we are not people who are drama people. No, I've noticed. People who are drama people who like bringing up drama, they annoy us. I, mean, I can see that. Yeah. We, so you guys are pretty relaxed. We do our best to avoid drama if we can. Mm-hmm. Also, the, the one time when we did feel any type of strain, I think, is probably when I was lacking severe amounts of sleep and just being kind of awful because we had two small children or, or even just one for a little while. But like when we had two, Josh was not sleeping uh, or we didn't have two yet. No, when you were pregnant with Mina, I had taken a second yeah. job for, for three and a half months. Mm. Certain parts of certain things I don't remember super well because of my lack of sleep. Of course. It really does make you a crazy person. Right. It so would. any amount of strain that we felt the most came from lack of sleep. Well, yeah, lack of sleep, but also like you know, tiny humans mm. suck up a lot of your responsibility and a lot of your patience. Yes. People don't have. You can't strangle them. We, no. we have we have a really high amount of patience, the two of us, which is probably why we don't argue. So is there anything you guys don't have in common? That, uh, oh, yeah, we have tons that aren't in common. Yeah. He and I have completely different sets of uh, senses of humor. Mm-hmm. There's okay. a lot of things that I think are hilarious that are very unappealing to Josh, and that's okay. Yeah. I go and enjoy them either by myself or with my sister, because I think it might just be the way that we were raised, but there's a certain amount of humor that we find funny that Josh finds very unappealing. Yeah. But it works anyway. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, he doesn't have to, like, no. say, the office. But the main thing is, like, your morals, your values, that's all. Yeah, but you're going to inevitably enjoy things that other people yeah, don't Yeah, of course. Enjoy. You're always going to find minor differences. But the whole thing, like, the, the big thing I think that I can attribute as our, our, like, primary factor to success... That's what I want to know. ...is we literally, we don't approach conversations about the relationship with emotion. So we, we feel the emotion of the con- of what we have to talk about. Yeah. But we don't bring that to the conversation. How do you not? Because if you do, you're just going to end up fighting. You talk about, this is what I feel. And she'll tell me what she feels. Okay, we are in an impasse. 
how do we solve the impasse? Because you're a and team. That's it. You're a team. Exactly. And you're going to solve it together, even if you're on opposite sides. Yes. Uh, although we've never really been on opposite, opposite sides. Not yeah. for... The Because, like, things. you... He would never oppose my feelings. Well, no. Yeah, because we don't, we don't approach it as, like, oh, you think this, I think this, and we have to... One of us is going to be the, the ultimate victor in this competition. Right. Yeah. Because well, normally, if you're upset, you come at it with, like, uh, this is how I feel. So he's not going to be like, you don't feel that way. And I would never be like, you don't feel that way. So we approach it. We do feel the emotions, but we don't bring that into the conversation. Because it's not helpful. Right. You can still feel the emotions while you're explaining it. And have you always you, done it this way? You actively try Pretty to... Pretty much. Yeah. You actively try to explain to the other person why you think you feel that way. Rather than that, you feel this way, and that is all that matters. <laughs> or just running around and behaving, you know, kind of like an animal, where you just you just react react, react with emotion with emotion because that's not helpful. No, right, and that's not to say like the emotion is invalid, but you can't a long term stability can't fix is it. Yeah, is not going to be you're based not on fix it by just because like if you're sad, it's okay to cry. Yeah, of if course. you're angry, it's okay to like feel angry. But or I'm even, not gonna, break, I'm not even gonna breaking smash. things in a constructive manner. But I'm, I'm not going to, like, smash plates because I'm just like, Yeah, the dishes aren't being done! Smash, smash, smash! Because um, that's not helpful. You need dishes to eat off of. Yes. And If you smash them. Everybody eats off the plates, including me. Yes. And it, it's not helpful to just yell crazy things and run amok. Well, no. You can't, <laughs> there's, there's no running amok. That's true. Uh, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And everybody hates dishes. That's, a, that's <laughs> like, it's not a normal thing to behave like a crazy person and just huck dishes because you hate dishes and being angry with somebody because you hate dishes. He didn't make them. He didn't make all of them dirty. No. We all made all of them dirty. Right. Okay. So it's crazy to be like, you're the one responsible for dishes. So you guys are very rational about everything. I think so. Is, is what I'm gathering here. Mostly, I think. We, appro- we approach things in such a way that it's, it's about the problem. How do we solve the problem as opposed to, you are a problem because I feel the problem. Okay. That's, yeah. That's healthy. It's a, it's a us versus the environment. Yeah. Rather, if it was a movie. Rather than, like, you know, her versus me. Right. So you're always a united front. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do try to be a united front. It's all about teamwork. Yeah. Okay. We are team. Yeah. Okay. Um, it probably I'm like, also helps, too, that sometimes people are weird about, like, you should be doing this job because it is a man's job. You should be doing this job because it is a woman's job. And we constantly have to tell people, we are a team, we do the job that either best suits us, or whoever's available, available to, do it. to do the job. That's like, right, yeah. for example, I enjoy mowing the lawn. And I worked night shift for years. So I can't, like, oh, well, it's middle of the night on the weekend, so I'm going to go mow the lawn. Yeah, like no, a crazy that would, person. That also, that, that would be creepy. Don't mow the lawn at night. That's I, creepy. I did it once weird. and had the cops called on me. I bet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, we don't have, like, an electric or gas-powered mower. We have a human push mower. But you look like a crazy person mowing the lawn in the middle of the night. With a I flashlight do. strapped up to your head. Yeah, just don't... I could see you doing that, yeah. actually. Yeah, it, but, like, people are concerned for your safety and their safety. And, and it's just weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a children of the corn type thing. You know something's up. Especially because he was giving the cackling laughter? No, no, oh. that's me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it's important just to listen to your partner. And try to avoid drama. That's the thing. Too many people thrive in drama. True. Yeah. Like, even now. We went to uh, um, a stag and doe recently, right? Uh, Shane and Sarah's. Yeah. And, like, at that, there are grown people, 10 years our senior, that are having arguments about, well, he looked at her and how dare he. Mm. Like, really? Yeah. I oh. was very drunk and just having fun. Yeah, that's fine. But, yeah, no, drama. Drama. For drama's sake. Same stuff, same stuff I heard at the teen dances when I was 15. It doesn't stop. They keep nope. carrying it forward. Same drama. Which is you, so weird, because at least at a teen dance, like... These people are either <laughs> retired or retiring in a few years. That's yeah. how old they were, and they had the same drama. 
But at a teen dance, like, you're a weird... You're in a weird state of life. You're learning how to deal with your emotions properly. You're learning new social dynamics. And one would assume that at a teen dance, it's because you're a teen. And it's because you're also full of, like, weird hormones. And your sleep schedule's off. And school is too much. That that same thing with menopause, apparently, because the drama starts back up, apparently. Or never ends. I don't think it ever ends for some people. Yeah. And Do men have a thing that's like menopause? Eh, kind of. They have a, they a must, low right? testosterone or, yeah. and sometimes they have testosterone spikes. Because there'd be like some type of equal hormonal change, right? Not as bad, but yeah. Well, yeah, because like a lot of... Because you, you continue to produce uh, uh, sperm until, until you die. Yeah. Just the quality of them degrades. <laughs> I know you didn't mean that as a joke, but it's funny anyway. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. But there is a, is a, I mean, there is a loss of, of testosterone, usually. And then you can also get testosterone spikes where it goes, oh, oh, no, we should be producing this stuff, shouldn't we? Ah, I'm too lazy. <clears throat> uh, so that, that, that would have the same similar effect. But people, some people just thrive in the drama. So, so my recommendation to anybody... Probably watching too much TV and thinking that's how life is supposed to be. But TV's there to entertain you, so you don't have to live that kind of life. If, it's if there you, to program you. Yeah. If you listen to the rusted robot associated with this one that came out just now, where we're ta- we talk about the Harley Quinn. Episode 279. And some people aspire to the Harley Quinn Joker as a relationship goal. Right, they do. And that's insane. Yeah, it is, literally. Because that is nothing but codependent, violent drama. We don't want that. No, no. you definitely don't. Especially, they actually try to, like, they actively try to kill each other Mm -hmm. we knew a couple you super don't want that we knew a couple who uh one of the things she would come over uh, once a week and tell us about oh how i i I threw a knife at my boyfriend this week you're like you should break up you shouldn't be together but you know (laughs) i'm like oh my god did you did he get hurt no no luckily he grabbed one of the books and and blocked it and it the knife buried into the book instead of stabbing into his chest. And, oh, aren't we so funny for having these kind of fights. Wow. And we were like, no, no. No. You shouldn't be together. That That's like yeah, that's not more healthy. than a red flag. That's something you go to jail for. That's like, a, that's something you go to jail for. That's a red blanket. It's more than a flag. <laughs> and my lifetime dating rule that I always instituted was if you break up, you can break up once because you made a mistake. Each. Okay. After that, if you break up again, you, you shouldn't be together. Right. Like, if Katie yeah, breaks up with me in on a... On and off, on and off. Ugh. So, Kate, if Katie breaks up with me... Yeah. Right, because whatever reason... Mm-hmm. But she made a mistake. It was a temporary moment of psychosis or whatever. Lack okay. of sleep. Lack Crazy of sleep. person. Right. Once, okay, Katie breaks up with me. That's fine. We can get back together and try to solve the problem. But if Katie breaks up with me again... Then, then the relationship wasn't meant to be. Okay. But I can also have a break and, oh no, I made a terrible mistake because I was just upset because I was in so much pain because my leg hurt and I, I broke up with her. Right. Don't make that the reason. Oh no. <laughs> <coughs> I didn't even cause the leg pain. <laughs> so, but that's one each. One mistake breakup each. Okay. Yeah. And after that, no. If you break up again, the relationship is never meant to be. Don't do that drama of, oh, we're back together again. We have friends that broke up 12 times in three years. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's, that's they a break lot. up, and then uh, but, uh, they each date one person for like two weeks, and then they get back together, and oh, everything is wonderful again, and he loves me so much, and... She really gets me, you know? And then it's like, no, you people are insane. You're not meant to be together. That Although, sounds exhausting. Either that or admit you want an open relationship. Yeah, because yeah. also, like, maybe they did really get them. Because, like, if you're, if you're both like that, maybe that, that is the only person who's going to understand you is another freaking crazy person who just wants to also sleep with everybody, but also likes you. They should have just had an open relationship. They would have been fine. To be perfectly honest, that that would have solved. Their that would have problem. solved all their problems. I think it's just because it's not socially acceptable. I think I want these guys on the podcast one day. Oh no, no, uh, no not no, together in the same room. They, They're they broken have, up again. They have broken up and since <laughs> since made it permanent uh, because one went to jail. Oh, that's a good reason. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. Please don't, so, please don't be friends with these people. <laughs> no. So, so what we've learned is no drama, good communication. Yeah, all of your drama, if you can help it, should only exist in the fiction you read and watch. Very good. Try to like avoid it. it if you can. Good it, advice. It's awful. It sounds awful. Yeah. All right. Any parting words for our uh, listeners? Once you find a good one, don't let it go. Did you guys make a list of things that you were looking for in a partner? Nope. No. No. No, we... Sometimes you just like them because you like them. Yeah, and like the things I liked about Katie is nothing like the things I liked about a previous girlfriend. Okay. Because they're different people. Of course. And like, you make a list, you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, she's got to be five foot nine, and she's got to be blonde, and she's got to she's gotta be big boobed and... Nice legs and... Right, all the things. Also, part of the time, and, 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 when you're and, making and, a list, you're going to wind up probably mostly focusing on the physical because a lot of people don't think about all of the emotional and intellectual things you're going to like about a person. Okay, that, that's and, funny because... Oh, and she's got to be funny and like, okay, what do you, what do you mean by funny? Right. Because like, some things are funny to one person, mm -hmm. not funny to another. True enough. I am hilarious and you, a treasure. You are. You definitely are. <laughs> and, and I made a list about just over a month ago. Really? But nothing was physically on there. Really? Yes. And one That's kind of cool. One of these days, I'm going to have an episode where I talk about the list. And it's very general, and it's just a broad outline, and it doesn't the person doesn't have to be blonde and 5 foot 9 and and wearing glasses and beautiful. That that's great if she is, but that's that wasn't on the list. It's great if she is and that's also on your list. <laughs> sure, sure. But I didn't put any physical characteristics on the list. Cause well, that is good because many people who are still in the dating pool are still looking for that physical. Of course, they want perfection. But even if you're not, though, like, I don't know. Part of the thing is when you fall in love, they're not going to meet any kind of requirements. No. It's like when we made a list. We made a list for our house. Yeah. What the, you wanted when you bought the The place. number one biggest thing that I put on the list that I was just like, this could be a deal breaker. I want lights in the ceiling of the living room. Mm. We live in this house and I absolutely adore it. I will never move from the house. I intend to die here or somewhere nearby while still owning this house. There All are, my stuff will still be in it. There are no lights in the living there, room. There, there aren't, no. Because when you fall for something... It is what it is, and you love it for what well, it is. That's right. You can you can have a list, but it's just an outline. It's not like a guide. I don't know or, if we had rule. anything. It's, when you fall for something, it's just it's it's it magic. It just is. It's magic. That's what it is. And, and to be perfectly honest, I think the key factor is we had established a very good friendship first. That's important. Because then we knew we could interact with this person for a long time, and we liked them and their personality and the way they they existed. And we know that we like each other, whether or not there's anything physical between us. Yeah. So. Because like someday when you're old, if you're don't if you're not a functioning person anymore. Right. You like what if you're in love with a person and they're basically just a head in a jar? It's nice to know you're still gonna be loved even if you're just a head in a jar. Yeah. Because you like them. Right. Yes. I just thought of a terrible joke. Oh no! Why, well, don't we, why don't we finish the podcast with your terrible joke? Well, it has to deal with Katie's thing about a head in a jar. Oh. I'm like, well, at least they can still give you head. Oh, there you no. go. And on that note, thanks for uh, finally coming aboard <laughs> the Soul Forge train. Appreciate it. I learned a lot, and I hope our listeners have too. Uh, listeners, if you have any comments or feedbacks or suggestions for Josh and Kitty, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, but until next time, thanks again for everything, and remember whatever you want, you can have. Period. Manifest that shit. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. Hi. This is uh, Admiral Adama. My name is Robert J. Sawyer. This is Cena Grace. Hey, this is Stephen Amell. Hey, this is Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek. I'm hanging with Sean and Josh. They're telling all about general geekery. And you are listening to the Rusted Robot Podcast. The number one rated robot-related podcast in Northern Ontario. You should be following them on Twitter. Keep listening. Don't forget to follow them on Twitter. Subscribe on iTunes. The Rusted Robot.podbean.com. The Rusted Robot Podcast. Think about it. Rusted Robot. 
This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.